and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting for the Board of Public Works for Friday, March 18, 2022. Dr. Campos. Good morning, everyone. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer, establishing roll call and quorum for today. We have President Garcia, President Pro Tem Davis, and Commissioner Corzan. Madam President, you do have a quorum at this time. Currently, we do not have any callers on the line under general public comment. We also have no commentary under the neighborhood council comment section. In addition to that, we do not have any callers on the line under general under uh, public comments on any of the items for today's agenda. Uh, Madam President, there's also a request to withdraw item number six, if there is no objections from your board to withdraw item number six, in as much as the community level contracting item was reported to your board on February 9th and the next scheduled meeting would be on May 11th, so we would like to request the withdrawal of this item at this time. Great, any objections, commissioners? No, hearing none, it, uh, it's okay, Dr. Campos. Uh, thank you, Madam President. All right, well, this takes us now to the item, um, for to today's item for this, oh my God, I'm totally getting it wrong. Uh, to, for today's items, um, the first item on today's agenda. It's the approval of today's minutes. It's the approval of Friday, March 4th, 2022 minute. Is there a second to my motion to move this item forward? Second. second. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna take it from Dr. Davis. So first by me and a second by Dr. Davis. Dr. Campos. We'll go ahead and start the voting tabulations. We'll start with you, Madam President. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. And Commissioner Corzan. Aye. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam President, would you like to move this forward forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Well, there goes my first item of business as president. All right. Second, uh, our first item on the agenda is a count, it's in Council District 4. This is a bid extension for the Sheldon Arlita Park Street Improvement Project, recommending the board to one grant an extension of the bid date from March 30th, 2022 to April 20th, 2022, and an extension of the date to submit questions to March 30th, 2022, and two, direct the city engineer to advise all prospective bidders of the board's action by an addendum. And I think I have Nur here for this. Good morning, Nur, how are you? Very good, good morning, commissioners. So the Sheldon Arluda Street Improvements Project was advertised on February 25th, 2022. The project scope is constructing street improvements to the three streets, Arluda Avenue, Sharp Street, and Wicks Avenue, which surrounds the Sheldon Arluda Park, also known as the Cesar Chavez Recreation Center. The street improvements will consist of a new curb, gutter, sidewalk, street lights, signals, street trees, irrigation, and tubular steel fencing. The city engineer's estimate for the project is 3.9 million. So the project was we had a pre-bid meeting on um, March 2nd, and the project is scheduled to receive bids March 30th. As per the um, bid proposal, the last day for a contractor to submit questions for the bid is March 9th. And during that March 2nd pre-bid meeting, they had asked if they can have a little extra time to review the documents and also submit a bid. So they can just you know, provide a better bid and provide more resources um, to submit a good bid. So this extension from March 30th to April this bid extension from the bid due date from March 30th to April 20th um, will be a better opportunity for contractors to submit um, submit a more proper bid. So there, therefore, that's why we want to request Board of Public Works to grant this extension from March 30th to April 20th for this project. Great. Thank you, Nur. Nur, point of clarification, who did you say asked that needed more time? It was the, no, the contractors. Some of the contractors have asked. Okay. The bidders, in other words. Yeah, the bidders, the contractors who came to the pre-bid meeting. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any questions on this item? We'll start with uh, Dr. Davis. Uh, none for me. I'm uh, pretty clear on the report. Great. Uh, Mr. Corson, any questions from you? Uh, a clarifying question, if I could. And of course. I know it's a 20-day extension. Does that, will they still be able to accelerate the timeline on the project so it meets uh, actual deadline or does the deadline for completing the project also get extended by 20 days? Oh, this, well, the the deadline to um, complete the project um, won't get extended. It'll just move, um, it'll move forward. So it'll just, everything will get delayed by 20 days. Thank by, you. By the time the award is. Okay, 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Commissioner Corson, that, that was uh, your questions? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, is there a uh, motion on the table to move this item forward? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? A uh, second. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Dr. Campos, we have a first by Dr. Davis and a second by Commissioner Corson to move this item forward. Yes, we'll start the voting tabulation now. We'll start with you, Madam President. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. And Commissioner Corzan. Aye. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous, Madam Chair, or Madam President, I apologize. Would you like to move this item forward forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. No, thank you for your time. This was fairly easy and, um, and nothing crazy on a Friday morning, so thank you for giving us that. Uh, other than that, have a good, great, uh, good weekend. Thank you. The Culver City Democratic Club State Center. I don't think that was for you, NER. So you're good. Thank you, NER. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, colleagues, we're moving on to item number two on today's agenda. Item number two is a finding to continue teleconference meetings pursuant to Assembly Bill AB361, recommending the board to one. Adopt the finding and determination in accordance with AB 361, Section 3E3, that while the state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as originally proclaimed by governor by the governor on March 4th, 2020, remains active and or state or local officials have imposed or recommended measures to promote social distancing, this legislative body has reconsidered the circumstances of the state of the emergency and the state of emergency continues to directly impact the ability of the members to meet safely in person and or state or local officials continue to impose or recommend measures to promote social distancing. I, we don't have anybody on this item, right? This is kind of what we do every month so that we can continue doing our uh, virtual meetings. That is correct, Madam President. Great. Is there a second to my motion to move this item forward, colleagues? Also second. Great. We have a first by me and a second by uh, Commissioner Corson and Dr. Davis. Uh, colleagues, this is just to, we do this every month uh, so that we can continue to have our virtual meetings while we're still under the state of emergency, um, the state of emergency uh, mandate. Wilson Garcia, this is uh, Ted. So, um, Obviously, as the state of emergency uh, and the situation evolved, I mean, we're, we've been doing this for a while now. Uh, we, we will continue to keep the board updated should uh, we feel that the, any of the circumstances described in the motion have in fact changed. So, okay. But, but okay. it's still an appropriate action should the board want to take it. Okay, thank you. But, I mean, at a certain point in time, you know, we won't be in a pandemic. Right. We're, right. Not, we're not there yet. No, not yet. So, so far for this is going to cover us for the next month, right, Ted? Yes. Perfect. Okay, Dr. Campos, should we take roll call on this one? Absolutely. There's been a motion by uh, President Garcia, seconded by Commissioners Corza and, and Davis on item two. We'll go ahead and start the voting tabulation. We'll start with you, uh, Madam President. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. And Commissioner Corza. You're on mute, Commissioner Corzan. Aye. Thank you very much. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam uh, President, would you like to move this forward forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a very short agenda today. Good. Uh, this is uh, moving on to item number three. It's, this is an administrative item. The mayor and city council have approved and authorized the Board of Public Works on behalf of the Bureau of Sanitation to execute the proposed memorandum of agreement with Council for Watershed Health. Uh, we also do not have a presenter on this item. Right, Dr. Campos? So it's just an administrative item. So is there a second to move this, to move my motion forward? Second. Second. Thank you, Dr. Davis. There's a first by me and a second by Dr. Davis, Dr. Campos. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, we'll go ahead and start the voting tabulation. We'll start with you. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. And Commissioner Corzan. Aye. 
This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam President, would you like to move this item forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. So I feel like I'm missing something. Did I miss something? Or, or is it just really short? The agenda is relatively short today, yes. Okay, good. I covered all my bases, right? Everything yes. Good. Okay, good. All right. I'm going to have to be double-checking just in case I kind of get used to all of this. All right. Well, given that we don't have any more uh, voting items, we're going to go into our oral reports, and we have uh, two oral reports today. And we'll start with... Um, Four, status update of major upcoming street improvement project by the Bureau of Street Services. And Mr. Maxwell is here again joining us. Hello. Good to see you one more time. I hope they don't change your rotation because I, I, we like seeing you here on Fridays. You're on mute, though. I can't, we can't hear you. You're on mute, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you nice. Very clear now. Okay. Good. You have one more Friday with me. Oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> we're we're going to have to pull in some uh, some favors there with Keith. Let's tell him. <laughs> with you more often. <laughs> all right, Mr. Mack, we're ready when you're ready. Okay. Good, well, good morning, President Garcia, Commissioners, Bureau Reps, and Dr. Campos. Um, the, I'm providing this information provided, uh, to keep the public informed on our upcoming resurfacing projects to minimize the impact on the community as well as delays to the commuters. Uh, street to LA would like to provide you with an update on all major upcoming street improvement projects. So during the week of uh, March 20th through March 26th, the Metro Valley region will complete a total of 13 projects for a total of 11.96 lane miles. Uh, the press releases were broadcasted and notifications have been issued. Street to LA has coordinated with the council district office to assist with the outreach to stakeholders, and we have uh, coordinated with the Los Angeles Department of Transportation for traffic control assistance. This information is also available on our Street to LA website at streetsla.lacity.org. Uh, for additional information or concerns, you can contact our coordinating department at area code 213-847-3200. And this uh, concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Any questions, colleagues? No, none from me. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Corson? No questions. Great. All right, Mr. Maxwell, you're off free now. Thank you for your wow, time. Yeah, see how quick we are this time? <laughs> All right, Mr. Maxwell, have a good weekend. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, all right. We're moving on along to item number five. This is uh, Office of Forest Management Update. The Office of Forest Management, Rachel Mallorich, is here to present on today's item. All right, Rachel. Good to see you. Good to see you all as well. Um, good morning, uh, President Garcia and Commissioners, uh, Bureau Reps, and Dr. Campos. Uh, I'm here to provide a quarterly uh, oral report to you all on the work of my office. I'm just going to briefly, I'll try and keep it as quick as we've been thus far, but I'm going to share just a brief reminder of um, kind of the things that guide our work and then provide you some updates on three of our key projects really uh, pretty quickly. So thank just you. as a, yeah, thank you. Um, so just as a reminder, um, the Office of Forest Management, oh, sorry, let's go back up to the beginning. Um, the Office of Forest Management uh, was created to help coordinate work across our city departments and bureaus um, to ensure uh, that we achieve a consistent vision for our urban forest and that the actions the city takes support a healthy and robust urban forest across all of our communities. Two of the documents I'm going to be referencing today, one is our first steps to develop a urban forest management plan for the city of Los Angeles. This is a document that was published in December of 2018 and, and the board is familiar with that did a needs assessment through a 10 month process with city staff and stakeholders to develop some early recommendations for developing our first urban forest management plan. The next thing that uh, guides some of our work is the mayor's Green New Deal. In particular, I'll be addressing, um, again, this main target that he has put forward for us to increase tree canopy of areas of greatest need by at least 50% by 2028. Um, lastly, our, the Office of Forest Management talks a lot about 
the four pillars of urban forest management. Uh, we will not have a healthy urban forest for our residents if we're not investing equally in the areas of planting, maintenance, preservation, and engagement. Um, a lot of people think about uh, trees and they think that I'm only gonna talk about tree planting, but those four areas have to all be working together to make sure that we have resources and healthy infrastructure for all of our community members. So with that, I am gonna share briefly about the Urban Forest Management Plan, progress on that project, our financing study, and then a brief update on our equity projects. So first, I'll, I'll start with the UFMP. Um, as you all are aware, um, starting with the First Steps report, the sixth recommendation within that First Steps to a UFMP report was that we develop and implement an urban forest management plan for the city of Los Angeles. We secured funding from CAL FIRE in August of 2020 to develop the UFMP, but have experienced some delays due to uh, COVID and other staffing issues. One of my main focus at this moment is completing contracting for this project so we can kick off the consultant portion of the project. I just wanna highlight the, the work done in that first step project, the ongoing collaboration I have with city departments and the feedback we received from you all as our board, from the mayor, city council, CPAC and other key stakeholders um, has given us a very clear view of what we're gonna, with the issues that we're gonna have the consultant research and help us address through the process of the UFMP, which will be uh, a robust stakeholder process. So I'm hoping to bring to the board the contract um, for that item in the next couple months. So just an update on the UFMP. Uh, next, I just want to highlight the financing study. The first steps report recommendation 3B was for the city to complete an urban forest <coughs> financing plan. We know that we can't provide the urban forest that our community needs without being able to fund all four areas of urban forest management. Um, and so to that end, city plants received funding from CAL FIRE to hire a consultant to develop an urban forest financing study for Los Angeles. This project has two key objectives. One is uh, developing the cost for a fully funded urban forestry program. Again, what is it gonna take for the city to have to meet the BMPs or best management practices for tree maintenance, a regular trim cycle, pest management, um, tree removal, tree planting, all those components. We wanna make sure that, and, and the enforcement investigation required for tree preservation. So the consultant has been doing the background research on that and has been working on developing those figures, including uh, a, a pro bono presentation to our CFAC, one of CFAC's, our community forestry advisory committees, subcommittees, to get their feedback and input on ensuring we are covering all the bases that our community groups would like to see included in that cost. So the first part of that project is developing, um, determining the cost for the fully funded urban forestry program for the city of LA. And then the second half of the project was looking at funding mechanisms to achieve that budget that we need for urban, um, proper urban forest management. That project as a whole, the financing study with those two key objectives is about 75% complete with an anticipated completion by the end of June. So the consultant is currently preparing a draft report for our steering committee to review um, and I've supported this project. It is a city plants led project, but I've supported this project through um, guidance and feedback on the approach, coordinating and facilitating meetings with key city staff to ensure we get that comprehensive picture of the deep desired costs, um, helping to coordinate that briefing with CFAC. And I'm, I'm really very excited with the progress the consultant has made to date and really appreciate the participation of, of a variety of city departments, including we had CAO, CLA, city attorney, um, helping to guide us as we develop some of the thought process around developing the costs and the mechanisms for funding. So that's again an update on the financing study which you'll hear more about when that project is completed. And then lastly, I just wanna um, touch on our equity projects. Our, our urban forest is not equitably distributed, which means that not all of our neighborhoods receive the services that trees can be providing. Um, so the goal of increasing tree canopy by 50% by 2028 will require investment in new trees but also key investments in maintenance and preservation of existing trees. And when we plant new trees, we know that not all of them provide the same level of benefits. If you can only plant a small tree, you're only gonna get a little bit of shading. Um, and in some areas of the city, it's going to be very hard for us to meet that goal without making some changes to our physical space to accommodate larger trees. So to that end, we've uh, combined several efforts to help us work to understand and address this challenge. Um, I'm just gonna share just an overview of where those two of those projects are. One is our USC project, where we're partnering with a multidisciplinary team. I've shared with the board about the first phase of their work that was completed last spring 
around April of last year, USC um, finished the first phase of their project. They're well underway on their second phase where they're looking at neighborhoods of Boyle Heights and around the University Park campus in South LA to help us have um, some feedback on where greening, greening efforts should be prioritized based on the demographic information, the use of the space, um, including feedback from the community. They've been um, engaging in robust community engagement around this project. The other thing that the project is helping us understand is the impact of trees and, on air quality. We know that trees are good for improved air quality, but a lot of the research that's been done to date is focused on the East Coast or European um, locations and trees. And so the USC team is helping us understand how tree species and configuration can provide enhanced air quality improvements for our residents. So that, that project, again, well underway and we'll be sharing the findings of their work when it is completed, but wanted to just update you that they're helping us look at those two specific neighborhoods to provide some key recommendations on, on how we can um, best meet the needs of the mayor's goal in those communities. The last project I wanna highlight is, I shared with you all last spring about the visiting scholar for urban forest equity that we had on board through City Plants, Dr. Vivek Shandas. Um, City Plants has secured funding from Accelerate Resilience Los Angeles and the U.S. Forest Service to continue his work, and they are, we are rebranding it as the Urban Forest Equity Collective because it isn't just um, Dr. Shandas, but also a, a group of folks that work together on the last project that are continuing to be funded to support us. And this project, while USC, their project focuses on analysis of a couple specific neighborhoods and understanding our, the impact of trees on air quality, the Urban Forest Equity Collective is focusing on helping us understand, one, where do we currently have sufficient space to plant the trees we need to meet our canopy targets? And then two, when we don't have sufficient space, what types of projects are the best options for increasing tree canopy for public health and resilience to climate change impacts like extreme heat? And so that could include potentially addition of park space, incentivizing private property, tree planting or preservation, redesigning the public right-of-way. And I know that the board, you know, any of those options are not gonna be easy tasks. And so they're um, gonna be helping us understand exactly where those interventions may be needed and the justification for why we might use them as opposed to maybe leaving things as a status quo. So we can then discuss those options with the community and with our city departments to weigh all the different factors that impact those spaces and, and make decisions for a healthy urban forest and making sure that all of our neighborhoods receive the services that trees provide. And so that project has just kicked off its second phase where it's going to be addressing those specific questions I've just outlined, and that's anticipated to be an 18 month to two year project. Um, as, a, as a kind of footnote to that, I'm really happy to share that our Community Forestry Advisory Committee has just added a new equity ad hoc committee that will be uh, likely, we've been briefing them on our work to date on the equity issues and really look forward to collaborating with them as a partner in both communicating with their respective communities and helping us develop some successful strategy, having them be a portion of, of some of these teams. Um, so with that, I will, uh, I will stop talking and take any questions you all have. Just those are the, the quick updates on a couple of the key projects I wanted to share with you all at this quarterly report. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> we were, I think we were all enjoying your report, so we were hoping that you kept going. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let me uh, let me ask the commissioners if they have any questions. Uh, Dr. Davis, any questions? Well, first let me thank uh, Rachel for a great report and update uh, to date, and I appreciate that. As we look at the work that you have been doing, and I looked at the four pillows of concentration uh, around trees, uh, certainly in terms of planning, We've always been able to do a lot of that and make sure that in the underserved areas of canopy that we have special targeted uh, planting programs. Yet, when we look at many cases presenting from the Urban Forestry Department of Street Services that come before us, we have those who are advocates of preserving the trees often telling us about the opportunities missed that they have assessed in terms of preservation. So in your oversight of our area of preservation, what can you tell me about what you have observed and the barriers that we have had to encounter? And do you have any strategies that you feel that we can implement that will help us to make more progress as it relates to preservation of trees? 
Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Um, and that's actually, I almost included an update on preservation in my report, so I should have just gone for it. Um, I, I will share that there's a variety of activities around tree preservation that we're, we're doing. That's actually the, the last and very significant part of my work. I am hoping to have a report coming to the board in the next couple months, which is why I didn't include it in my oral report. But I, would, I am happy to provide you an update that, one, I'm working really closely with Bureau of Engineering and Department of City Planning, as well as the Urban Forestry Division, as we discuss um, issues related to the public right of way. I know the board has heard cases on uh, street trees removed for street widening and other considerations where we have um, conflicts with other infrastructure components in the public right of way. And so we have been meeting internally to discuss, you know, how can we, uh, one, flag that there's a tree related to a project very early and have a really robust conversation at the front end of the project to weigh the, the different infrastructure components, whether it be uh, a DWP transformer or the street widening being required by Bureau of Engineering and the tree itself, which we know is an investment that you cannot remove and then immediately replace. It's, a, it's an investment that unfortunately takes um, time to mature and provide us all those benefits. So we are working on um, looking at some potential pilot ways to, to coordinate and have trees be reviewed earlier in the process. Um, secondly, we've been working with planning to also identify um, a tree disclosure statement where a, new applicants coming in for projects would be filling out a form indicating, helping us again flag that there are trees either in the public right of way or on their property that are protected trees so that we get that flagged and um, alerted to UFD earlier in the process. And again, changing our processes and procedures for doing things takes time, but I am confident that we are getting there uh, because we do have that robust staff participation and feedback of what's reasonable, what, how we can move more quickly to do that because we don't want the unintended consequence of, of trees being removed when we have a new project. Um, that being said, I do work closely with Urban Forestry Division and they work incredibly hard to work with applicants on preserving trees whenever possible. And unfortunately, the trees that are saved don't come before the board. We, we, we just get to have them continue living in place. Um, and so I have been discussing with them how we might document the work that they do to, to really ensure tree preservation on projects. Um, but we do have a ways to go. I know that we, this is an area where the community is very concerned and obviously I am as well. I know that if we plant, but we have trees removed, we're not gonna get to our goal. So it's a, it's a matter of really making sure that our policies moving forward for, for development in neighborhoods includes a consideration of where, where will trees be in that neighborhood. I don't wanna have to come in with a really, like I've described in the Urban Forest Equity Collective Project, I don't wanna come and say, actually I want you to redesign the street to accommodate a larger tree well, when we could have talked about it earlier in the projects and identified a different location for that tree. So um, I wish we already had all of our answers, but I am uh, excited that we are working towards understanding how we can present that to our different departments and help them incorporate that into their processes for developing new policies, um, you know, related to that SB9 and, and other components that are coming before us um, from the, the state level and other other factors. So, uh, any Great. any additional questions? For, for yeah, my final you? question to you is just operational in terms of the staff and the relationships and the associations that we have to do the job that you do, how have we done in terms of giving you the adequate resources to complete this awesome task that's very dynamic and diverse? Uh, is there any plan for additional staff? Do we have enough staff currently? How do you assess where we are in terms of the resources to do the job? I, I really appreciate that question. Um, I am very encouraged. I continue to remind myself that we will have a consultant team for the UFMP onboarded sometime this year that will add uh, a limited time but additional capacity for um, moving some of these heavy lifts forward. Um, but, but I will say that a lot of the work being done on these projects are based on, again, staff to participation from other departments that have been willing to maybe go the extra mile or prioritize on their work list to some of these issues um, because I, I can't unfortunately do it all. We do have a position that was identified in this year's budget for my office and it has taken some time. I have much thanks to, to Dr. Campos and TJ Knight for their support in um, going through the hiring process with me for, for that position. We haven't, we don't have someone on board yet, but hopefully in the near future we will have an additional staff member. But I have shared that there, it would, you know, there are some needs where we could be doing more if we had some support for um, to someone who's looking at the data. We've got really fantastic data coming in from our research partners and from our new tree inventory. The ability to kind of 
operationalize those findings more quickly. Um, some additional staff resources would be helpful for that. Um, I think that that's kind of the, the, the shortest answer I can give to your Sure. Is that, position, you. is that position approved or is it being pondered uh, that you talked about, that you discussed? Um, so we do have, again, one role that will be added to my office that will be providing operational support in, in the level of senior management analyst and providing some really key support there. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the contracts coordinator that was brought on also in this year's budget cycle, um, Devin Satorsky. That's also been incredibly helpful for, for me to have some support with the UFMP contract. Um, but the other one that I mentioned, that is one that I have offered as a recommendation for, for this year's budget. We'll, we'll see where it lands as we move forward um, in, in this year's budget cycle. Thank you for your report. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, Commissioner Corson, any questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Davis asked some really interesting questions, so those were really good. But I do have one, and thank you for the presentation. Um, as you have a USC and maybe other consultants looking into reports on what type of trees to use and where to place them, would I'd be curious to know if like we could look at maybe greening other public spaces like street signs or uh, street lights or you know adding greenery that maybe one piece doesn't add uh, enough environmental benefits, but adding them all across you know a, a, an area might help with beautification and also a different type of greening. I, I'd just be curious, not to say like this is a great idea, but I, I just would be curious on what the benefits, if any, would be on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think, um, uh, and I, I've, I've kind of, I think that the other commissioners may have heard me tell this story, but in my previous work, I had some time um, developing with communities, tree planting projects, and I came across some streets that using all my typical urban forestry tools of you know, pulling different types of permits for concrete cuts and getting permits for tree planting or even engaging with residents with private property tree planting, that there were still some corridors where we still didn't, we did not have available space to achieve the greening we needed for, you know, families walking their children to school or others wanting to enjoy the pedestrian right of way. Um, so that is one of the things I'm most excited about in my current position is getting the opportunity to work with our city family and research partners to say, what are the outside the box things that we may need to consider in order to make sure that we are having healthy and beautiful communities moving into the next decades? Um, so I, I don't know if I have a specific response to the scenario you're laying out, but I do know that we are um, looking at, one, how do we understand our partners? You know, what, what does street lighting need? What does uh, BOE need? What does Department of Transportation need in these public spaces? And are there uh, mutually beneficial spaces that we could look at greening that allow all of those pieces of infrastructure to coexist? Um, and so no, no specific answer, but definitely uh, appreciate your thoughts um, and any, any recommendations you have as we move forward. Thank you. You actually gave me the right an the, the answer I was looking for is that you're looking into it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Corson. <clears throat> Rachel, I don't have any questions. Very, uh, very. Uh, thank you for your report and um, good job on everything that you're doing. Uh, you know, one of the things that we want to also make sure is that I know that you're working on and you said it on your report is uh, getting ahead of the design so that we don't have to get into these situations where we're uh, pulling out trees for, you know, for design where we could have avoided it at the beginning. So I just want to make stress that out that thank you for, you know, inserting yourself on that and in any way that we can be helpful to move that along where I know that all of us here would really appreciate that uh, uh, to, to get to that point. So um, please, um, you know, reach out to us if you need any assistance on that piece of it, or uh, we can work together on making that happen, Rachel. Thank you so much, uh, President Garcia, and I, and I have shared this, I, I know, with you, but I, I would love to share with the other commissioners that the actions that the board has taken over the past two years with regards to um, tree removal requests, your thoughtful deliberation, and even at times, you know, denial of some tree removals um, has had a huge impact. You know, your, have, you have set the tone um, indicating that we will include trees as an important piece of our infrastructure that should be considered um, carefully. So I already feel your support, and I know that UFD Urban Forestry Division does as well, and definitely will be engaging you all as we move forward um, if we need additional support. So thank you. Okay, thank you. 
All right, Rachel, thank you. Um, we, Commissioner Villegas is not here, and uh, so I am hoping that maybe you can, uh, you know, update her once you get a chance um, on what you're doing as well, or even um, send over your slides, which, by the way, would be very nice slides on making sure that we knew uh, what your kind of, what your role is in within the, the city. And so your very first slide where you stated kind of every department and how you coordinate services among that, and it's not just about planting a tree. It's really uh, much more than that. Well, thank you for that. It was really well described. So uh, nice slides too. Okay, uh, Rachel, thank you for being here with us today, Friday, and I appreciate your report, and we look forward to your next report already. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. All right, uh, Dr. Campos, I think that leads us to the end of today's uh, meeting. Yes, the desk is clear. Great. Um, so with that, colleagues, um, we'll take a five-minute break if it's okay, and then we'll come back for a, uh, a very short management meeting. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And this meeting is now officially adjourned. Thank you.